Welcome to the Tenkara Grasshopper Kabaddi Box. I'm your host, Graham. In this series, we're going to cover how to tie traditional Japanese Tenkara Kabaddi along with Western flies that I carry in my personal and guide boxes on a daily basis. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by AvidMax.com. Welcome to episode one of the Tenkara Grasshopper Kabari Box. In today's episode, we're going to cover the tools that you're going to need to get started tying Kabari flies, or Western flies as the case may be. I am currently using the finest fly tying benches of Colorado Rainbow Bench. This bench is 24 inches wide with two old two hook trays along with more than enough storage for all of my thread, my markers, and my tools. One of the really really nice features that I like with this bench is that you actually, at least on mine, I have two tool trays. I have one here to the right which holds my scissors, my bodkins, my tweezers, uh, barb crushers, all those things that typically those of us that are right-handed are going to use. Now if we go over here to the left, you're going to see that I have extra jaws for my vise. Uh, I've got some bobbin holders. I have some extra hackle pliers. A number of different things on this bench that just come in handy for me. Down in this back row here, I carry a ton of Sharpie markers. I use Sharpie markers when I'm trying to add a little extra color to a fly. It comes in really handy during those times that you might be using a lighter color or you need to maybe match the hatch. The finest fly tying benches are made here in Colorado by Jay Burge. If you want to check out any of the benches, head over to his website and take a look. He can customize benches as he has mine. To the left of my bench, you'll see the finest fly tying benches of Colorado Side Caddy. The Side Caddy is designed to hold up to 41 spools of thread along with jars that will hold beads anything else like that in these little bead containers. Again, this keeps all of my items organized in a nice orderly manner. One of the really, really cool features that has been built into this bent, into this side caddy is the dubbing holders. Now most dubbings, if you buy them in assorted sizes, will come in these boxes. Each box is labeled with a name of what the color of that dubbing is. One of the things that has been designed into this bench is the fact that most of these boxes actually if you spin them have a hole in the back of them so you can actually take dubbing out without having to open the whole box. The One of the cool features and designs that went into this was that you can actually pull those that dubbing out and when you're done you can spin it back around. So whenever you're looking for a name of a particular dubbing you can actually see the box and know what it is and then spin it around. This is a feature that Jay has spent a lot of time working on and I'm really really excited about how well it works and I think you will be too. Do you need the side caddy? Again, no. Does it come in very handy for organizing stuff? Yes, I would definitely agree that it does. My vise of choice is the Peak Rotary Vise with the steel base. The Peak Rotary Vise is available with 
a C clamp as well, but I have found that the base seems to work the best for me. I've had my peak for quite a few years, and I will freely admit that I am definitely sold on the Peak Vice for its quality, construction, and uh, just its ease of use. So, when you're looking to get into a vice, I would definitely, in my own personal opinion, suggest the Peak Vice. There are a few upgrades that you can make to the vice. Uh, one of the things that I've done is that they, the vice comes traditionally with two plastic knobs. You can actually upgrade those knobs and you can go into a brass knob. I definitely like the durability of the brass and I think it also adds a little more beauty to my bench. Uh, I do have across the top here a material clip, so when I'm using longer feathers or something like that, I can use that to control some of those materials. The jaws on the Peak Vice on the standard size are very, very useful and something that basically anyone can use and will cover pretty much all of the flies that you're ever looking to tie. If you're looking to tie larger streamers and items like that, then I would definitely suggest the larger jaws. I have used those once, but I have not used a ton of them. Uh, I've not had a reason to use a lot of them. So that kind of gives you an idea of your bench, or your vice, I'm sorry. Um, your vice, now one of the things, for those of you that don't have a dedicated tying space um, or a room, I would definitely suggest getting some kind of a trash bin uh, to hold all your feathers and uh, extra detritus that you might come up with as your tying flies. It definitely keeps things a little cleaner and organized and those of you that are using a dining room table, this will save a lot of pain in the future when your significant other uh, discovers how much stuff you've created and spattered all over the place. So let's take a look at some of the basic tools that we're going to need. These I would define as your hand tools for tying your flies. First of all, we're going to start off with our bobbin holder. Now our bobbin holder is actually going to take a spool of thread when we slip it in, it's going to control that thread and allow us to wrap our flies. Bobbin threaders come in different sizes. There's plenty of different styles out there. My favorite is a ceramic tipped bobbin threader, bobbin holder. The reason that I like the ceramic tip is that ceramic doesn't have any sharp edges or shouldn't have any sharp edges so it's going to keep you from popping and cutting your thread all the time. There are standard metal thread or metal bobbins. If you decide you want to stick with something like that you can do that as well. So once we have all of our we figured out our thread and our bobbin holder the next thing that you're going to want is a good high quality pair of scissors. Now scissors for fly tying are extremely sharp and you need to be careful with your scissors. With the edges if you're cutting something very very fine like thread and you want to keep your scissors sharp I would not suggest cutting wire or something else uh, that's heavy duty. If I'm cutting wire I just use a pair of these scissors. This is something that I probably stole from my wife's sewing kit. I don't really remember. I may have bought them. Just don't tell my wife if I did steal them from her. Um, now, one of the things that really happens with scissors, when you're looking at the size of a pair of scissors, look at the handle size and where your fingers go. The bigger the hole, the more comfortable it is going to be carried to hold the scissors. 
what I like to see is that I can get my thumb in here comfortably and I can get my finger in and I can use the scissors. Many production tires that I've seen will actually tie with their scissors always in their hands. So they're always available. It does save time so I'm not having to constantly pick up my scissors. There's a bunch of different scissor styles out there. I will say probably one of my favorite scissor styles has been something like this. Now what's cool about this scissors, about these scissors, is that you can put your middle finger in and you're holding the scissors like this so I can literally keep the scissors in my hand at all times. If I want to get the scissors out of the way, I simply spin them and they sit on the back of my hand so they're out of the way. So when I'm wrapping or talking to you, I'm not stabbing anybody. If I need the scissors, I bring them back around like this, and I have them in my hand. So, go with the scissors, with a pair of scissors that fits your hand. Make sure, though, while you're actually looking for your scissors, that they fit your hand comfortably. It's one of the hard things about scissors but it's also one of the fun things is there's plenty of styles out there and you can come up with what's going to work best for you. Let's talk about bodkins. So bodkin is basically just a pin. Very sharp but still just a pin. Bodkins actually have a small handle attached to them that will allow you to do a half hitch. Some of them are just basically a wooden stick that a pin has been pushed through. I've actually made my own bodkins out of a wine cork and a push pin. You, like I said, there's a ton of different options that are out there. Uh, bodkins are actually used for separating fibers from hackle that may have gotten accidentally tied in. They can also be used for dipping into head cements or something like that and putting small drops of glue onto your flies. Uh, whip finishers. So a whip finisher is actually a tool which allows the tire to tie what's known as a whip finishing knot. This is the Mattarelli whip finisher. This is by far my favorite whip finisher. It's the one that I use, I started using 20 years ago and I still use it to this day. Uh, in one of the future episodes I'll actually cover how to use your whip finisher. But having a whip finisher really makes things quick. Now that being the case, there is a knot known as the half hitch. You can actually use the half hitch when you're tying knots and I will actually demonstrate that. The cool part about tying a half hitch is you don't necessarily always need a tool to do it. Um, I do my half hitches by hand, but it's something that has taken me a long time to learn. So that being the case, I would suggest don't worry about the, um, about the half hitch by hand quite yet. But having this can really make a difference. There is a little bit of a learning curve to it, but once you learn this, you can really pick up your finishing of your knots. Now, the last tool that I would suggest that you definitely make sure you have is a hackle plier. And what a hackle plier is going to do is it's going to grab your fly, it's going to grab the hackle that you're wrapping around a fly, and when that hackle gets shorter, you're actually going to be able to control that hackle. There's different versions with different jaw styles. There's something like a round tip. There's also what we would consider maybe more like an English style hackle. One of mine that I've really come to enjoy is a rotary hackle. So this is on a hinge and as I'm holding my hackle it's actually going to spin. You'll see how this works when I'm actually using, when I'm tying some of the the patterns that we're going to cover in the future. So We've covered the basic tools that you're going to need for fly tying. What I would suggest is you go out, check out some of these tools, or go online to avidmax.com and order these tools. 
Let's just cover something quick here. There are sets of fly tying tools that you can purchase. I have found that some sets are not exactly the highest quality tools and I end up buying better tools later on down the road. That being the case, buying sets can be a little cheaper to get started. So, it's up to you on whether you want to buy sets or individual tools. The prices will come out to be right about the same. Have fun looking for your tools. Get the basics. As time goes on, as you saw like on my tool trays that I have on my, my bench, um, your tools will accumulate and you'll have more and more tools over time. Have fun with this and yeah, just get your stuff, get the basics. When we're ready, we'll get you into some of the good stuff. Thanks for watching this episode of the Tenkara Grasshopper Kabari Box. Subscribe on our YouTube page at Tenkara Grasshopper Kabari Box to stay up to date on any future videos that are coming out and review some of the past videos that we've shot. Thanks very much and tight lines in Tenkara.